the song has been sung. The time is upon us. We must convene the brethren in court. In the ancient times of myth and legend, the seas were ruled by the powerful sea goddess Calypso. As Calypso fell in love with a mortal sailor and subsequently broke his heart, she created a spark that would change the world forever, unleashing the mortal's fury upon mankind. He assembled the most powerful pirates on the seas and brought before them a spell capable of bringing the powers of the sea to humanity, leaving the goddess powerless. Famously, the plan worked, and the items containing the powers of Calypso passed from these individual captains to various successors over the years, until the legend of the Brethren Court was long forgotten. In the years since, the next generations of pirate lords established a set of rules, often viewed as guidelines by more rebellious pirates on the seas, rules that became known as the Pirate Code. And with all that, the question remains. Was the Brethren Court real? Was there a shipwreck cove? Was there an actual Pirate Code? Well, buckle up, because the truth is incredibly fascinating. To begin with, I'd like to discuss the Pirate Code. Originally introduced in The Curse of the Black Pearl, the Code acts as a loose set of guidelines that Captain Barbosa follows whenever he's in the mood. Elizabeth invokes the right of parley. Barbosa maroons Jack twice with a pistol to shoot himself, and once Jack falls behind, he's left behind. All rules within the Code. So does this have any backing in real history? The Pirate Code is a greatly exaggerated version of the real Pirate's Codes, sometimes called Ship's Articles. Crews would agree upon what sailors either enlisted or were forced to join pirate crews. Typical agreements made in the Articles would be how much everyone got paid, compensation for injuries, rewards for the first crewman who spots a ship, regulations on plunder, limitations on gambling and fighting, and rules against desertion, cowardice, or drunkenness in action. Often, these punishments would be extremely cruel, warning off any rule-breaking. The films accurately depict the typical punishment for the most abhorrent of crimes, marooning. A pirate is left on a deserted island with a bottle of water and a pistol loaded with a single shot. Now, the pistol wasn't for hunting or signaling a passing ship. Once the water runs out and you're on a scorching hot beach, the pistol starts to look really friendly. In the films, the Pirata Codex is a large book containing all the articles a pirate must follow as gospel, somewhat like the Holy Bible for pirates. If funny enough, pirates would often agree to the rules while swearing on a Bible. The Codex was stored in the Grand Hall of Shipwreck City, the main gathering area of Shipwreck Cove, a large stronghold made of the wreckage of retired sea vessels, where the Brethren Court call home. It's a safe haven for the most notorious of pirates, one described as being impossible to invade. In real life, there are many ports that pirates called home, everything from Tortuga to Port Royal to New Providence to Virgin Gorda. These were all places that pirates could make port repair their ships, and recruit new sailors to join their crews. And while Shipwreck Cove could be based on any of these free ports, I'm more inclined to believe it's based on the legend of Libertalia. Libertalia was a rumored pirate settlement, supposedly founded under Captain James Mission. It was described as lasting 25 years by Captain Charles Johnson in his book, A General History of the Robberies and Murders of the Most Notorious Pirates, a book with a really comically long name. Johnson described Mission as being a Frenchman, born in Providence, and after having spent time with a Roman priest, supposedly had ideals of living amongst others as true equals. Shipwreck Cove seems to accurately portray that idea, as all pirates of all manner of races and nationalities seem welcome within its walls. And speaking of which, I think it's time we discuss each of the nine pirate lords. What historical figures inspired their creation? Starting off simple with the Lord of the Caspian Sea, Hector Barbosa. I already covered Barbosa in another video, so I recommend checking that out, but I'd theorize that he's based on a loose amalgamation of real pirates and the tropes and stereotypes they inspired. Simply put, the character of Barbosa is an original interpretation of older tropes, and his only direct link to any real-world historical figures are through his last name, being a riff on Barbarossa, the name of an Ottoman pirate Hey, read in Barbarossa. Next up is Amand. Amand seems to have a similar source of inspiration as Barbosa, seemingly inspired by the Barbosa brothers. Amand is a Barbary corsair who became a wanted man for his crimes against Christian sailors in the Mediterranean Sea. Once again, if you want to learn more about Hey, read in Barbarossa and his brothers, check out my video on Captain Barbosa. Next up is Jocard, probably my favorite member of the Brethren Court aside from the main characters. He was likely based off the legend of Black Caesar. 
Now, bear with me here, because the story of Black Caesar is very odd and complex, and I'm going to really simplify the story. The Legend of Black Caesar is the story of an African warrior who was enslaved by Europeans, became friends with a white sailor aboard the ship, and staged a mutiny. Eventually, he killed his white friend in a dispute over a woman, and he owned a harem of a hundred women. Allegedly. Now, for those who love pirate lore, it may seem odd that I left out Blackbeard from that story, and that's because the legend of Black Caesar is likely made up. There was a slave aboard Blackbeard's ship, and there was somebody named Caesar aboard the ship, but it's unknown if they were the same person. But the story is super long, and honestly, it's so fascinating, I feel I can't really do it justice. So I'm going to leave a link in the description to another YouTube video by another pirate YouTuber who covers the subject in great detail. Elizabeth Swan is very likely a hyper-exaggerated version of the legend of Anne Bonny, a young woman who fell in love with a pirate and dressed up as a man to stay aboard his ship, eventually being captured and set for execution, but escaping because she claimed she was pregnant, and eventually disappearing. Sao Fang is pretty much an entirely fictional character, and same with Jack Sparrow, and honestly, I can't be f***ing bothered. Time to ask the pirate man if he wants to do this shit. Hey there, sport. Hey, how you doing? Sisters. Well, I'm going to need your help with a video collab. Oh, a video collab. What does that entail? Well, I'm going to need you to discuss the Pirate Lords from Pirates of the Caribbean for me. Oh, Pirate Lords. Well, <laughs> I'm your guy. Is that a zucchini? <laughs> I think it is. Not entirely sure. Cheval is probably my favorite Lord of the Brethren Court, because he bears a strange resemblance to a buccaneer named Chevalier Gramont. Cheval means horse, and Chevalier means knight. Gramont was a short and olive-skinned man, active in the late 17th century, famous for being a tactical genius. He was pretty much the French Henry Morgan, and one of his favorite tactics was to steal Spanish horses, and organize them into buccaneer cavalry units. He is the only pirate ever known to use cavalry. Madame Ching is definitely based on the Chinese pirate Xing Shi, also known as Cheng Yi Sao, active in the early 19th century. Her name means Wife of Cheng, because she was a prostitute that married a Chinese privateer. When he died, she inherited his fleet and turned pirate. In 1810, after almost a decade of piracy, she accepted an amnesty and retired as a brothel madam. Historically, her fleet flew red flags without any motifs. In the movie, she flies a red flag with some Chinese characters. Sumbaji Angria is the pirate lord of the Indian Ocean, and appears to be based on Kanoji Angre, an Indian pirate active in the late 17th century. Kanoji was known for capturing small English vessels belonging to the English East India Company, which earned him the title of fleet commander in the Marathi Navy. He had an illegitimate son named Sumbaji. Eduardo Villanueva is the Spanish pirate lord of the... <laughs> <laughs> the, the, Adri the Adriatic Sea, which is the small body of water between Italy and the Balkans. Impressive. <laughs> he doesn't resemble or seem to be based on any historical figure in particular. The POTC wiki claims he was based on Admiral Don Miguel Agustin de Villanueva, who apparently commanded the treasure fleet and died in battle against the English in 1711. I couldn't find any evidence to any of this. No admiral or commander named Villanueva, and no treasure fleets defeated after 1702. He seems mostly based on Spanish stereotypes, including a rapier, which were very common with Spanish pirates. Historically, Spanish pirates tended to be incredibly patriotic and state-aligned, and would never side with foreign heretics. It would also be near impossible to be a pirate in a region as stable and easy to control as the Adriatic Sea, unless if you were a privateer employed by either Venice or the Ottoman Turks who were mostly on friendly terms for the sake of trade. The Brethren Court was also greatly inspired by the real-life Brethren of the Coast, a loose coalition of privateers and pirates, sailing during the 1600s. They were located in Port Royal and Tortuga. Often, they were actually French sailors, specifically. They were a syndicate that ran under the letters of Mark and Reprisal, basically all sailing under different empires of Europe at the time. Their jobs would be to destroy and take over other enemy ships from other rivaling empires. Just as with the rest of the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, the Brethren Court and all their associated iconography are a perfect blend of real history, historical legends, speculative fiction, and outright fantasy. Everything from customs closely associated with piracy to having an alliance based on real historical pirates. Thank you all so much for watching, and thank you to Golden Gunpowder for helping me with this video. 
If you want to learn more about Black Caesar, like I mentioned earlier, his video will be in the description. If you enjoy my videos on the true stories of Pirates of the Caribbean, you'll love his channel. He covers the golden age of piracy in great detail, everything from real historical figures to what the average lifestyle of a pirate was like. Also, join my Discord server to discuss all sorts of adventure topics. I'm active most nights there, so feel free to stop by if you want to hang out with my friends and I. Also, subscribe to my Patreon to support my channel, and check out my merch store. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.